Hey YouTube, it's Faye, and look, I am back at Hill Country Performance with my friend Danny, who also has a YouTube channel, by the way. Go ahead and go to my community tab, and you can see how to subscribe to Danny's channel, because obviously he's taught me a lot, probably taught you all a lot, and uh, you can learn a lot from him. But anyways, we are back here finishing the Turbo Masterclass, and um, all right, where do we leave off? So I just got the exhaust housing there already. Did some nice scuffing, uh, posted a picture on Instagram, a video on Instagram, and uh, oh, you know what? I'm gonna post a video of that right here. Then I got it in the parts washer, cleaned off all of those shavings, um, washed it off in the hot tank, uh, not the hot tank, uh, with a hot hose, and then dried it. And uh, here, here we are, back to where we started, all the parts all nicely laid out, clean and ready for reassembly. So here goes, where are we at, Danny? All right, the main important thing is clean, clean, clean. What we've already done, you don't, you can, you know, do the videos on cleaning or not cleaning, but just, just basically cleaned all the parts. Yes. Uh, this is all coked up, and uh, we got in here and cleaned everything up. We uh, glass beat it, or you glass beaded everything, so it's ready to go, and it's nice and clean. The most important part, I guess, would be if you're going to glass bead everything, right. that's fine. That's a preferred way to do it. But if you don't know what you're doing, or if you're not going to clean it very well, I would prefer you leave it alone. Just go in there with the pick, clean everything out, wash it with some solvent, and put it back together again. That's not going to cause any more damage. If you were to glass bead this and leave one piece of glass inside the turbo, it's just going to trash everything really quick. So the preferred professional way to do it would be to glass bead everything, but you can tell there's a little dowel pin right there, a little, you know, um, a roll pin. Yep. It could hold glass beads in there. There's so many little crevices that could hold glass beads. There's another one on the inside of it that holds the, the, the thrust plate. And if you had glass beads in there, it would trash everything. So if you're not comfortable in making sure everything's clean, just clean it with some so solvent and a pick, and mm -hmm. it's good enough. I would I would prefer that as opposed to to you know not having it clean or leaving a little piece of glass. The next thing is um, eBay is our friend. You can either, eBay is e our friend. <laughs> either admit that or add it. No, um, let's just tell people where we got them. Yes. eBay was that kit, and it was cheap, like twenty bucks. Right? Yeah, um, for about for about twenty five bucks, we can get a rebuild kit. When I started doing turbos, they weren't available. The one thing that you could not get for the the DIY guy was a turbo kit. In really? fact, when I started getting into buying the kits, I had to actually sign an agreement that I would not sell it to the public oh. because I was a rebuilder. And it was really hard because they didn't want these kids going to the public. So, and the reason is, there's a lot of reasons, but the main, when you know, um, people that don't know how to do it, it's always going to blame the kit. You're yeah. always going to blame the oh, kit. And, yeah. it's, and it's just like a valve stem seal, it's never the kit. <laughs> hey, not that it's never, if it's been... Um, rebuilt before this was a blitz um, so a lot of people will take a turbo and then do their custom take on it yeah okay? I've seen where they'll come in here and take a turbo and when they do a rebuild they'll actually hone out this here and put an oversized bearing, bearing in there yeah oh, so they'll put an oversized okay. bearing but then what you'll do is you'll go and you'll buy a kit and you'll assemble it thinking you know what you're doing, and you don't have an oversized bearing. Gotcha. And you'll yep. trash it. So the very first thing we're going to do when you get a kit, um, a mic is your friend. One of these in your toolbox is probably the best thing you could ever do. Um, this is a, a, a Materio Digital. It's really... Um, oh my I've God, had, I have that same one. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've had this for, for years, and it'll go down to zero. There it is to zero. It's so sensitive. Wow. And I've had it for years and years and years, and yet... It's still, you know, it's a when you buy a nice, uh, a nice tool, it'll last forever. So the very first thing we're going to do is take your old bearings. Their bearings, um, I like to say it's kind of a misconception because it looks more like a bushing. Bushing. Yeah, yeah. but that's actually the the bearing that that brass? that it's brass bearing. The newer stuff now, high dollar turbos will come with actually a roller ball bearing. bearing yeah. yeah, ball bearing turbo. Someday. But that's that's something totally different. So basically what I want to do is open up the kit and we want to just verify that Blitz didn't put in an oversized bearing. We may be stopping right here or we may maybe not. So 626 and 5 tenths and our new one is 627. That's what we're looking for. This uh, turbo has worn down wear. a little bit. So we oh. got five tenths of a bigger bearing. 
It's going to tighten up our clearances. Uh -huh. Remember, this oh, was already loose. That's they, right, because we had damage to the fins. That's how we got damage to the fins. Blade. If I don't know if you can see, the end of the blade right there has a little bit of an up curve to it. Oh, yeah. Just a little up curve on it. You can even see the end took a little bit of a of a beating. What yeah. had happened is that as it was spinning, it got loose in the housing because of the bearing, and it touched the side. So it touched the side, spinning at 80,000 RPMs, touches the side, so and fast. it actually b bent the fin slightly. It's very slightly, but you can see the little curve on that one. It really... So this really then is finding the smoking gun. So this is this is a, a good thing. We can see yes. where the wear was, and by replacing our by, bearing by, by replacing, bushing. Yes. <laughs> it's going to tighten up our clearances by five tenths. Yes. So it was working before, but it was already... now. It could have gone over and touched the side. It was a little loose, but it spun fine under extreme load. Yeah, it, it that, might, that might have happened too. Have, I don't it, know. <laughs> it could have boosted up really high, really high, you know. And the shaft, while looking pretty, you know, robust, you can actually flex the shaft. So, oh, oh, yeah, okay. And it looks okay. pretty robust. This is yeah. actually a bigger one. This is a Toyota one. The IHIs and some of the other import ones, they're real thin in here. And you can actually move them and bend them. This is pretty oh. robust, but it could actually get into ex some extreme boost and, you know, kind of want over to the side a little bit. Maybe mistakes um, were made. So having having it a little tighter is really what we want. Uh, we know it's, it's worn out. This turbo, we're going to save it, and we're going to show you how you can save it. What you don't want to do here, you don't want to straighten out the fins. Okay. You know, yes, I'd rather have them straight, but I'd rather have them not fly off. Exactly. Yeah, so if we were to get a pair of vice grips, a pair of pliers, or something, and tweak all those fins back again, it would look pretty. And if it was going to be a d display model, awesome. What we don't want to do is we don't want to fatigue, fatigue the them. fin. Yeah, yes. okay. When, when the, the, the fin gets bent, and then you bend it back, you actually fatigue right there. The metallurgy of it right there is, is going to change, and it'll fatigue it right there. And then when it gets under, under load, we can lose a fin. No. Yeah, so, so right now, what's the worst case scenario? It's still balanced, right? Yeah. Feels pretty good. Yeah. Just broken. <laughs> but if it's still balanced, right? We didn't <laughs> lose any metal from it, so it's still going to spin just fine. Is it going to be as efficient as a brand new fin with the right shape? No, it may not produce, it may be what, two milliseconds slower in spooling up. Oh, it my goodness. It may produce, you know, a tenth of a pound less boost. Oh, my um, goodness. But those things we can live with. Yes, You'll I can probably live with those. never notice that at all. But if we were to try to straighten them just for cosmetics, we would actually cause more damage. So leave the fins alone. Even if you see where they did touch a little more and it put a burr on them, you can actually feel a burr because it actually rubbed a little bit. Yeah. Leave the burr alone. Really? Don't sit there and try to deburr them. Are you going to rebalance it? Oh. No. Oh, you need that material on there. Leave it alone. <gasps> oh. Leave it alone. Walk Good away. Good thing you said that. I would have. Yeah, so it. just I'd rather have the little burr. Yes, the little burr is not going to be as slick on the air to bite the air to turn it. It has a little bit of burr. It makes a little bit of turbulence. Do you want to buy another turbo or do you want to still put this one back in service? So you got to use I'd common I'd like to keep sense. that one for a couple yes. more years. And, and you said that it might be good for a couple more years. It, if, if if the oil is, is, is right, has great oil pressure, um, it, it should last you know, just as just as long as having a new one. Oh. Like I said, if you had some kind of turbo dyno, you know, you may be 0 0.005 less of a boost, or it may not spool up as quick. But all the fins are still there. It's going to work fine. Okay, um, it'll be a good test. Now, when you load this video up, and you can do a once a year update. Oh yeah. yeah! Oh yeah! How's so, the turbo doing? Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. Back all to right, this. So. The very first thing we're doing is we're making sure that the bushings are correct, and we're going to check them both. 26.5, 27, I'm loving the tar out of that because that gives us five tenths. What is the inside? 395, 395, so it's the same inside diameter, which is okay. Because the main thing is it's actually 395 and five tenths. Yep. So what do we gain? We gain five tenths on the outside, five tenths on the inside, five and five equals 10 tenths, 10 tenths is one thousandths. That's a lot. That's Whoa. awesome. That's awesome. That's what really what I, what I wanted to see. 351, 353. It's even a little bit wider. Awesome. Okay, so now I can put these away, and we know that we have a pair that we're going to use. And it's awesome. It actually is going to tighten up our clearances. Now we're going to get into the inlet seal. On the inlet seal, I explained how 
Normally, this shield yeah. is not on. This one has little serrations to keep it there. Normally, it's not, and this is this is how normally it is. See, it's the same basic deal, but it just usually when you take apart a lot of turbos, they're probably oh, going right. to be like this. They're they're like it's pinched here. Yeah, it's just so pinched. these two are stuck together. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a little bit uh, harder to take it apart and clean it. But this is the inlet side; it wasn't coked up. You could clean it with brake cleaner solvent, and this is perfectly acceptable to go back into use. Okay. In this kit, we have a new one, so we're good to go. And on the inside, this is what we have on the inside. That's actually our ceiling ring, and there it is right there. When everybody says that, that's your ceiling ring. Seal. So, yes, that's the seal. That's the wait, oil seal? That's the oil seal. So when everybody says, oh, you have a bad seal, no. And I say no, and occasionally I'll see a burnt one, but it's not a seal like a, like a neoprene seal. Right. It's not a, like a neoprene seal. What I have seen, excessive heat collapses the ring. So this ceiling ring will get collapsed from excessive heat. It looks like a, a piston ring. Yeah, it's, it's it exactly looks just like a piston ring. So like th this one is in here and it's still in there, but I'm going to show you how to assemble it and put it in use. There's the ring that it goes into. And I'm going to give you another little tip. Before putting it on there, do what I always like to do. Stick it in where it's going to go. I don't know if you can see that. Look at the gap on the ring. Oh, yeah. You almost can't see it, can you? No. Nope. That's the correct ring. We have come across, I've come across, um, never had a failure actually assembling it, but I have come across to where I assemble it and have a gap in there that I would have never seen had I just blindly assembled this. So it's it's my personal uh, way of assembling because I'm buying the kits that can be made from China or wherever. Um, and I've seen American kits. And the gap will be real big because it's made for a different model number. Right. Or the manufacturer changed this housing. Uh, sometimes the gap is wrong and I've ended up using the old one. And it's per that's perfectly fine. Um, so, that, so this is correct. We're going to do the same thing over here. Here's another ceiling ring. That's the exhaust ceiling ring. Once again, a little piston yep. ring. So you <laughs> saw the intake one. There's the exhaust one. And what do we want to do? We want to put it in where it goes. So much fun. <laughs> There you go. Look at look at the end gap on it. Oh yeah. It's almost very yeah. you can barely see barely it. See They'll it. have a little bit more on the exhaust side because it gets hotter and it expands. Okay. Yep. Oh yeah. But that's the correct one. I have seen. I'll drop it in there and have a big old gap in there, and that would have been a, a just a, um, a comeback right off the bat. So then the, it would have been the seal's fault. It, then it would have been the seal's <laughs> or the assembler's fault. Oh yeah. Because yes, the part yes. can be wrong, and it's the 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 person assembling it responsibility, not the person who made the part. Because at that point, when you get the kits, you can call the kit manufacturer, call whoever you got it from and says, this is the wrong kit. You know, that, that, that's perfectly fine. But once you put it on, it's on you. You're the, the last person that's going to sign off on this. So we don't want to put a turbo on and have a problem. So we've checked, which is a very important thing. We've checked the exhaust ceiling ring and we've checked the intake ceiling ring. There they are right there. So we know that's correct. I'm going to go ahead and check. This is an aluminum one. This is a nice steel one. Nice quality machined one. 966, 1.966, 966. Pretty good. Okay. And that's the one that's going to go right in there. Okay. Get moving on this thing now. Let's go ahead and put our rings on. There was the old ring and there's the new ring. Old one over there. New one in here. Drop it down. We want to open up our gap. Voila. And that's where it goes. Yep. If it was worn out, you could have way too much play this way. If a thrust is bad and the turbo moves back a lot, you will wear that out. That wasn't the problem with this turbo. So I already knew that. So there's our exhaust one in place. Let's go ahead and assemble this dude when I get some lube. Amsoil. I like to use the Amsoil assembly lube. It's just the best, best stuff on the earth. Best. You can use um, regular 30 weight oil. It's fine. You can use whatever you want to use. Oil is, just, is fine. Well, the reason I like to use the Amsoil assembly lube, it's a little bit thicker and it sticks to the parts yeah. really well. There it, is. <laughs> it's just real sticky. Yes. It's real sticky so it sticks on the parts. So in the initial startup and the priming of the system, it's very important you prime a turbo before you hit the, the key. It just stays on the parts better, and I'm real uh, comfortable that even if you don't prime it correctly, we're going to still save a turbo. We've n never lost a turbo, so... Good to know. So, okay, let's put on our little ceiling ring. We just want to lube it up, and go ahead and pre-lube everything, and it's going to go in there. What I like to do is look at the, where the gap is, 
and then you can see the gap and kind of you can put that in there first oh oh just kind of just a little ring gap yeah yep. and there it is now it's nice. in place it spins around and that's what's going to happen this is going to be stationary and the inside is going to be spinning and there's your ceiling ring and now we have some good lube around there that's going to stay there for a while even if you don't quite prime it just right but i know we're, i know we're going to do that okay then we have a shield that goes just right there and now we have the exact part there brand new wow. put this over the side and then how and does that one how does the new one stay together the other one is pinched it, it's once you assemble it it's it stays there it into place yes okay. yes it goes into this uh, cavity right there so when you put it in oh. you just got to put it in this way and there might be a reason okay. of you know why they put the little serrations is just so that way when you assemble it it doesn't fall it's apart easier, yeah but once you assemble it that little slot there it's a little shield that helps divert the oil, the oil. back down yeah. into the cavity so oh. that goes in that little hole right there so that will yeah. stay in there. Once it's in place, it's in there and it ain't going anywhere. Perfect. So, okay. All oh, right. Now okay. let's get to the next part, which is going to be your exhaust shield. This one is a heat shield on the exhaust side. When we pull this apart, there'll be carbon all up in here, and it's basically just insulating the heat oh, yes. off, off, of, the, off uh -huh. of the thing. But it's a heat shield, so we're going to make sure we put that on there first. We have our bearings. Does this one have inner clips? Nope. What this Toyota does, a lot of engines will have inner clips. So inside of here, there'll be a C-clip. You put a C-clip in, you'll put the bearing in, and then another C-clip. Um, some have inner and outer C-clips. Some just have inner C-clips. This is a floating bearing system on this one. These float, but what we have is we have this piece. There's that assembly. There's that assembly. There's this assembly. We're getting so close. Now what do we have? We have our thrust plate. This plate is called oh, a, a thrust yes. plate. It's what keeps everything in line. It keeps the turbines from moving that way or this way. Here's hmm. our old thrust plate. And there were some differences, right? This one yes. was it. Well, if so you remember. Actually, wait, we found that weird little thing. Where you, was it? Yours There's was a clogged. Weird thing. Yeah. One oh, yeah. hole was clogged. Yep, yep, yep. Can you guys see that? It's right. A little bit of rod bearing. A little. It looks a little metallic. Oh, God, I hope it's not a rod bearing. Well, it could have been from the last time. Or it could have been yeah. something, but there's some metallic. -y. It was small enough to make its way through the whole system and ended up right there. Yeah. Oh, but, and I also bought this off of somebody used. So it yeah. So so first. there's that. They did make one of these forty or fifty bucks. I think I found it online, and they have extra holes. They drill extra holes for for oiling. So what happens is oil comes up this hole right here. That's your oil drain. There's your oil inlet. Mm -hmm. Comes in, goes to that hole right there. Then it goes sideways and it feeds both bearings. You can see a slot that feeds that bearing and there's a hole on the other side as well. So all goes through there, goes through this cavity, and then it feeds both bearings. See the holes on here? Yep. Those line up with that hole right there. And every time it spins, that keeps that lube. What it is is the shaft should never, in theory, in theory, should never touch anything. The turbocharger should last 100 years. In, in theory, because it never rides on metal. It rides on a film of oil. So there's yep. no friction, very little friction. The only friction there is, is the friction of oil. The oil, yeah. Yeah, and there's no wearing parts in a turbo. So a turbo should last forever. Wow, so Unless, the number one problem with a turbo is the owner. Yeah, or the assembler, well, yes. the human. If you, if you run a petroleum oil, is going to cook coke on you. It's going to get cooked, which is called co coking, coking of, the, of, the, of the oil. And then you're going to block off the oil hole, and you're going to burn up a bearing. Okay. But that's not the turbo's fault. Not the turbo's um, fault. So s synthetic oil, always, always, always. What happens is it all comes in through here, comes out of there, feeds this cavity right here. And then there's a little hole drilled right there into this one. So freaking small. There's a little hole right there drilled into this one. This piece, don't put it on like that. If you don't you know, um, that cavity that I just showed you has to aim towards that hole. Right, because that's where the oil Has to aim on. towards that hole. Yep. There's a dowel pin right there that's going to align it. So as it's running, it doesn't just sit there and spin. The opening goes to the back, and the other oil hole is going to feed oil up to it. So we're good to go. So what are we going to do? We're going to take, and we're going to put magic this. magic potion. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Beautiful. And we know that that little dude goes in there, and we can slide in our bushings from the other side. If you're doing this at home and you're just doing a... Wow, look at that rag. You're just doing a service. Um, 
This would be perfectly acceptable if you're doing an in-house service at home to put back in. There's our new one. And of course, I want to make sure that it's the same. And it is. Boom. That one goes over there. This one goes in here. I like to get a pick and... Our friend. Mm -hmm. We have this piece that we've already pre-assembled. And now we can see how that goes there. But I'm going to go and show you now what we're doing on this side. We're doing the same thing with our bearings. I like to go ahead and just get them lubed really well. Amsel. Yeah. Drop that, that little baby yeah. down in there. Awesome. Then we have this shield. This is a floater. So what it does is when we torque our turbine nut on, it's going to tighten up here and here. But the center doesn't really do anything. It just floats around inside of there. And it's just a spacer, essentially. All those little slots in there, you want to get some lube in them just because they're going to be in there to help us out when we first start this baby up. Heat shield goes on. We already have this ring. I don't like to put too much on here. Because I don't want to cook the oil. I don't actually want to fill that little cavity there with oil and then have it just cook right there. Right. Um, we don't need that. I want a little bit of lube on there. There's a little bit there. It's Amsoil. It's going to be real good with heat. But we don't need to sit there and cook oil up in here and have it get stuck in these little cavities. That's where they balance this originally. Yep. So I want just a little bit of a lube. Also do the same thing with the ring. I push the ring down and have the gap in not out because if it's out when you go to assemble it you could actually bend the rings in while you're assemble it so i like to push it down and have the big part up here and not the gap this is going to go in just like this a lot of times i'll even take the shield and use it to help push my ring down Okay, also a little tip that I, I like to do is which way does, does the turbo go in the vehicle? That aims down, right? Mm -hmm. So why am I going to put the ceiling ring aiming down? They're just like gravity is going to bring the oil pressure. Yeah, well, why not just, I mean, yeah. you know. Whoa. Uh, um, and it, you know, the, the, the turbine That's is going to be so spinning. Above and beyond. The, the, the turbine is going to be spinning, but the ceiling ring is going to be stationary. So I'd rather have it aiming up. Just, you know, for my own personal preference look at that you think about everything so like i said it's just just there's no set reason except for me if i'm going to have remember we saw a little bit of a gap yeah when i have it on the top so yeah. now any old this in the turbo would have to go all the way to the top before it would come out it just why not just if, if we're there anyway okay so now we have our two bearings in you can look inside and see our See how it's a floater, how it's actually spinning? So it's doing its thing. Now what are we gonna do? We're going to put our shield on and we're gonna aim that little slot into that hole. Really, how else could you, you know, it couldn't go to yeah. the But there's some people that maybe could do that. Um, hey, don't put a pass on We're not judging. Here we are. <laughs> Here, a lot of times what I like to do when I'm assembling a turbo is I like to use the housing just to hold my stuff so it's not sitting on a table getting all beat up. The snap ring is what's going to hold this in place. If you notice, the snap ring has a taper to it. Oh, yeah. The back part is perfectly flat. The front part is tapered. That yep. taper is what holds the pressure in. If we were to put it in upside down, it wouldn't be doing the same thing. The smaller the end and thicker in the center. So once we put this in and it expands, it actually puts all the load down. Yeah. So we want the, the taper aiming out. Once again, go like that. A little turbo stand. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can see it's already going into its little happy home. Because it pushes it down as yes. it expands. Yes. We expand it out into its little... Oh, there it goes. You see that? Yep. Perfect. The drain is over here. I kind of like to always do the same thing, put everything aiming to the top. It doesn't matter on a snap ring. It doesn't matter at all which way you put it. <laughs> We're good to go. The fun stuff is going to happen now. Oh, gosh. A.K.A. the stressful part. Look, it already looks like a turbo. Oh, yeah. We're already really on the, on the downhill side. Let me get a marker so we can show how to index everything. If you remember on the first video of taking it apart, yes. we indexed everything. Now I'm looking for those spots. Here's a heat shield. And you can see... You even in index the heat. heat shield because I'm actually, I'm using it as a tool. As a tool, yep. Yeah. So there's my little mark on there. It didn't affect the heat shield. Didn't hurt it whatsoever. What do we have up here? There's our other mark right there. Yep. There's a mark right there. And I use the, the original casting. casting so that I didn't as have to... Guy. Yeah, I mean, later on, I've told people how to do it, and they mark one mark here and one mark over there, and one like, once you glass beat it, you're really making it harder for yourself. So I like to look to use uh, an existing casting mark, and that way I already kind of already know that, look, I had to mark it here. Okay, what else do we have 
up here. Yeah. We had a fin that was painted. Yeah. Didn't we? Yes, we did. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to see. So let me try to. Because we didn't want to get in there, and we didn't want to ruin the balance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but there, there it is. Just a, yep, yep. You can see it. There it is. There it is. Right there. And what we do is that's our fin, and that's our fin. And that's our fin. You use I, this I just put a little line to, to which fin I was going to be using. To that fin mm -hmm. to line it up with the rest of the lines. Yes. Okay. Then we also have over yonder oh, our yeah. line. Oh yeah, that one's easier to see. Yep. Pretty easier to uh -huh. see. There's our line. I don't know if you can see it there or not. Yes, I can see that well. <laughs> so now all we have is one left right there. I see that I just put a little dot right there. I mark it here. That's going to be lined up right there. Right? That line tells me over here where I'm at. So now we have this right there, lined up, lined up, lined up, lined up, go up across here. There's our line and there's our line. Okay, now we're gonna go do this. One of the secret keys kind of things is I line everything up and this is what's gonna help you. See the nut? As it turns, it torques in. Well, right now, it doesn't line up with our lines. It's way over here. Yep. I line these two up. I was going to ask, because eventually you're going to spin the nut and, then and it's going to spin the turbine. I torque the two together. Oh. So the most important part right now, because now we know our torque. Yep. Now we got to just turn the, the turbine and the nut to get those two lined back up again. And we're back up to factory specs without a torque wrench and without damaging anything. So let's go do that with our naked eye. It has two flat spots when they balanced it that have been cut out of it. Yep. So I'm gonna use the flat spot to actually hold it. Oh, we're not hurting wow. anything. We're not touching the turbines. I'm actually, if you were to look on there, I'm above the turbines. I actually brought it up. Oh yeah. So I'm just grabbing the shaft itself, not yeah. really doing anything else there. And then I have my- That's brilliant. My mark, which I'm gonna find and my special socket. We have our little line that yep. needs to line up there. We have our line that needs to line up there as well. We've got the casting mark. And pretty close We've up the there. there. And then now we know what has to happen up here. That needs to line up there. Okay, so see our, our alignment. How is our alignment there? There, are we close? Perfectly lined up right there. Perfectly lined up to the pin. Perfectly lined up to that little line there. We follow that line and look at that. <gasps> We're good. It is perfect. And there's our alignment there. There's and our alignment there. Perfect there's torque. our alignment there. Oh my gosh. And look at this. We can actually. <sighs> yeah, the sound that you're hearing there is the heat shield, people. So calm down. Yes. And we have a thick, you know, Amsoil on there, but that's perfect. Man. Nice and tight. You can feel play because it should have play. But man, it's wow. nice. All right. Okay, we're we're past the hard part. At this point, if you were to do this at home DIY, you could do a lot of stuff at home. You might not want to get in, into this. It, right, you can just buy a cartridge. a cartridge. That's what a cartridge is. So if you want to know, when you go buy a turbo, a turbo is, is complete with everything on it. You can buy, people don't know, the cartridge. This is a cartridge. You can buy a cartridge, open a box, pull a cartridge out, put your old one in the box, send it back, and you're just going to use your housings. And that's still a lot cheaper than buying a complete turbo. Yes. So now we're at the point where we're just putting the housings on. This is a super simple one. The reason it's simple, if not, we would have indexed the housings as well. Right. And I think we even engraved a little engraved mark right there. We did, and, and yeah. And we put a line. <laughs> But this Toyota one is really awesome. They have little pins. Yep. So we don't have any issues to figuring out where this went back in. It goes back in the pin. <laughs> We're done. Oh. On the inlet housing as well. There's a pin on the inlet housing. Oh my goodness. It lines up right there when we have a turbo. We have a clamp on the exhaust side and we have another snap ring on the inlet side. Let's get to it. Sometimes the clamp nuts can get in the way. So we indexed it as well. There's our same one right there. And there's our one right there. And there's our clamp's gonna go. Um, and I see. Also known as elephant, elephant paint. paint. Not because of the color though. No, because one brush can paint a whole elephant. It just does not come off. <laughs> not because you need to, but because you well, never know. Yeah, because you know so, it fits there. You never know if yeah, there's another line to, there. Or... You're not gonna have to worry about having to, you know, move them, move them around. Don't um, want the customer to have to move them around. No. And then it's a tapered. Just like the snap ring has a little yep. taper to it. So, 
just basically tapping it in and letting it tighten itself up. You can hear, at first you could hear the shield. And now you can't hear the shield. Now you can't, hear, you the can't hear the shield. So this is already getting... Yeah. And this is a cast iron ring. So it's a little bit on the delicate side because it's cast iron. A lot of them have a, a stainless band. Um, yeah, which okay. Makes it really, but I haven't lost one, but I don't try to get medieval on it. And, and <laughs> just, medieval? Yeah, because, you know, it is cast iron. So it, it could crack on you. Um, another tip also is go ahead and once you get it this far is snug them and you start getting a little snug and then tap on it and it'll actually get a little more so yeah that's what we want you want to have no bind at all if you feel something you got to have the common sense to say stop And I notice you're constantly spinning it, like you're always, yes, always you're, checking. You'll know as you're assembling, you'll know something don't feel right. You can see how tight the clearance is. Oh my it's god, it's really yeah. tight. So if we were angled just slightly, you know, off to one side, it would be rubbing. And that's why when I when I put it in, I wanted to make sure. Remember, we're having a little bit of a bind, and yep. I just basically wanted to just let it go in nice and slowly. If you start just put it on there, or put the clamp on there, you could actually bend one of the fins. Yeah, ah, oh. but that's. Perfect, and then you, you are going to have a little bit of play, but very little. That's just the play that it should have. It should have a little bit of play because it needs to have oil on oil it. Oil in there, yeah. <laughs> Make sure when you tighten them up, you don't go grab one and turn it eight times and turn one one time. Yes. On there. But that, you know, almost shouldn't have to say anything about that, but. Well, we can't take anything for granted these days. <laughs> I know. <laughs> also, we're using the exhaust housing as our assembly. So I went ahead and did that, so now it's protected. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the inlet seal. The inlet seal is, once again, another O-ring. This was perfectly acceptable to go back into service. We have a new one, and we can even see how there's two of them. Oh. Because it fits more than one model. Oh, okay. So that's okay. That even seems to be smaller than the original one. I'm going to just try that one and see how the seal see fits. See how it is. And if it doesn't fit good, then a, there's nothing wrong with using this one. A again. tip on doing an O-ring is a lot of O-rings will have... There's a little seam when they press this dude out. There'll be a little seam. You can even spin this and see the little line. You can even yeah. see the little flat spot. Well, there'll be a little seam on there. And everybody wants to roll an O-ring on. You'll roll an O-ring round and you're going to have an O-ring failure. And you're going to have it where it doesn't seal. So, tip of the day, take yourself a screwdriver, a pick, and roll the O-ring with the pick several times. It just turned itself perfectly. So, when you go to, to roll this on, it could twist it. And it'll actually twist just like that. And it'll be on and twisted. Well, that little seam will be twisted all the way around, and it'll actually have places that, that aren't going to seal. Right. So on any O-ring that you put on, even if you got to roll it on there, reach in there with a the pick, get behind it, and just roll that pick all the way around, and that will self-align that O-ring. Okay, now what I want to see is, I want to see is how flat that O-ring is. Is this still have a good bite or not? Okay. I'm kind of liking the old one better than the new one. Yep. Okay. So. Old one it is. Old one it is. The magic potion. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put a little bit. You don't want to put RTV. There's no need to, oh, God, to no. put RTV. I guess you could. Do people do that? Well, you know, yeah, you, I've seen it. Doesn't it just but burn boy, up off the turbo? It's so it, hot. Yeah, I mean, this is, this I, is the inlet side, side, so it could, but it just, you could, you know, I've seen people for? that don't have an O-ring and just put silicone on there. What? what oh. And there are some turbos that have just a sealer. Okay. But it's a flat flange. It's not an O-ring flange, it's flat. And they gotcha. put sealer. That's all fine. I have seen them do that. It's just a booger later on. But in, a, in an emergency, you could use it. It doesn't, okay. that doesn't huh. affect it, but we don't need to. Like I said, common sense, I'd rather use the, the old one. Okay. You remember the snap ring has a taper. Yes. And the taper goes in and out. There we go. Pin line up. Flip it. We have to kind of slightly get a little bit of a gap in there. Yeah. To get it started. Mm -hmm. I have had to put it on the press before oh yeah look at that did you feel that yeah and just put a little bit of attention just like i did with my hand here yep. just yep. to help and Beautiful. that just even tell you how good that o-ring is still sealing yep if it just dropped in 
That's why I didn't like about the other one. The other one actually dropped in. Yeah. And so the O-ring yeah. wasn't even doing didn't much. Didn't feel like it was much of a seal. Yeah, yeah, totally. I like to do the same thing with my snap rings. I just take a screwdriver and make sure and push the snap ring into the groove and make sure that it is all the way in the groove. And it is. Okay. Voila. There you Look at that beautiful turbo. Oh my goodness. It is complete now. Let's make some noise and see if it... One turbo done. Now, this is uh, basically the complete turbo done. We do have the wastegate, and the wastegate, for the most part, clean it off with some brake clean or something. That's basically it. You're going to do more damage trying to make this look pretty. Um, you don't want to glass bead it. You don't want to put it in the solvent. You don't want to get the diaphragm wet. Right. So, for the most part, you're going to have to live with some cosmetics. And it can be buffed. You can sit there and buff that. You can clean that with a little bit of, you know, something in a rag. I'll generally brake clean it, test it. And then, if it's going to go out as a, as a turbo that I'm building, I'll shoot some silver paint on it. But that's about it. Oh, look at you. Okay, dude. <laughs> UPS just came in and your brand new waste oh. came in. No, so that's <laughs> all we gotta do. Just kind of clean it up. We we know, we know it was good. Uh, like I said, we could test the boost, but we can do that later. We know it's good. It's still the same thing. What we were doing is fixing there, but that goes on right there with the clip. And there's your preload. You can actually see how much you have to lift it up to get it to go on there. Yep. And that's because of that much preload. So we would put that there with our two bolts. Pull this back into that slot and a C clip, and we're done. Turbo done, and that's it. All right. Go out there and do a turbo yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, cool, watch the rest of the videos in this series and uh, subscribe to Danny's channel because he's got a whole bunch of awesome information that uh, you'll probably want. So, yeah. All right. We'll see you in our next video. Bye. Want that berry? What do you do? Weird.